All right, guys, welcome back to the Mountain Wizard. Thank you for tuning in and uh, entrusting me with your questions. And uh, hopefully this, this video is able to answer some of those questions. This is going to be a classroom style uh, setting for explanation of the rainwater system, how to set it up. Um, I'm going to not edit this video. It is going to be a long video. So if you're not along for the ride, sorry. But I'm going to try to explain this as quickly and simply as I can. But I am going to go through the gutter system, the pump, the pressure tank, filtration, all of that. So you're just going to have to bear with me on this, okay? All right. And you're going to suffer through my artistic inabilities. We're going to do our house here. And... Come up. Okay. So this is our house. This is the side of the house, is kind of what I'm shooting for here. And there's our sheet metal. You're going to call a seamless gutter guy, and he is going to come out and install seamless gutter all the way down your house. Okay. With a cutout for one downspout on the far end, the end that you want to collect the water on, okay? Have him cap the other end, tell him no additional downspouts. I've had them do this on multiple runs. I think the longest run that I have at my place is like 90 feet, and it's with six inch seamless gutter. Does not matter the cabin. I always have them do, or the size of the cabin rather, or roof that you're catching on. I always have them do the widest gutter that they can. Generally, that's a six inch. I don't know, somewhere someone might be able to do bigger than that. Right on. But when gallons count, you do not want anything spilling over. Get the widest one that you can. Do not screw around with going to Lowe's or Home Depot and trying to get these plastic eight and 10 foot pieces of gutter that you can put together. By the time you buy all the fittings and the glue and the end cap and the downspout and everything else that's going to go in with this, plus your labor. Plus the fact that you don't know how to set it up. This isn't what you do every day. So then you might need another hand and getting your fall accurate. So that way it drains, but it doesn't overflow. Long story short, just hire the guy with the seamless gutter machine. Let him come out, do it. He'll be done in a couple hours. You're going to stroke a check and go on. Sounds simple. I know if it's a short, like a tiny house or shed, you could go out to his job site and have him do that on site and then just transport it back to your house if you have a trailer long enough. So keep that in mind. Might be an option for you. Uh, somebody told me the other day that they did that and that seemed like a very logical way to save some money. Okay. Six inch gutter or whatever the widest is that they can do. Cap, downspout, cut out. Don't do uh, their aluminum downspout. What you're going to do is you're going to go to Ace Hardware or True Value or Amazon or eBay and you're going to get an adapter that goes from the rectangular cutout on the gutter system to a 4 inch sewer and drain. So 4 inch S and D is the pipe that I use. It's the thin wall, not the Schedule 40. I think they call it Schedule 80, but I'm not really. I could be off on that. Don't hold me to that. 4 inch sewer and drain. It'll be thin. You're going to come out of here uh, on your downspout, and your downspout is actually going to be 4-inch sewer and drain. Okay? You're going to do a T right here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, something like that. Okay? You're going to do a T, and right here on that T, you're going to do a screw-in cap. And this is going to be a clean-out when you need it. You're going to bring this over. And you're going to come up and you're going to come into your water tank. So let's just say that we're doing our water tank right here. Okay. That's our water tank. I'm going to erase the lines behind there so as not to confuse you. That's the end of the house. Okay. You're going to bring in, so you're coming down, you're going into the ground, come over, and then you're going to come up right alongside that tank. 
And this is where you're going to cut a hole with a four inch hole saw and you're going to enter the tank. Okay. And this is where your water is going to spill into your tank and it's going to fill all this up. Keep in mind, I've seen some people will have a tank that goes, you know, a 5,000 gallon tank on the end of their house and it's never going to fill up past the inlet point. And your inlet point cannot be higher than your outlet point on your house. Okay? I, I don't know how else to word that. It's just how hydraulics work. Um, they're always going to equalize to the highest pressure. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry. The highest uh, it is pressure because it's 0.4 PSI per, point, point four PSI per foot of water. But... It's also going to equalize to the uh, elevation, okay? In this example, please just bear with me. All right. So your inlet on your tank is lower than your outlet on your gutter system. I bury this in the ground purely for aesthetics, okay? Just, I painted um, this downspout the same color as my porch post. My porch posts are brown and they're round. You can't tell that this is a porch post unless, or that this is a downspout unless you're looking for it. Out here, you can paint it whatever color you want. You can paint it to match the tank. You can paint it brown. I don't care. You can leave it white if you want. But if you really want to clean it up and you want your wife to be sold on this project as well, paint it to match something. Okay. Your clean out here is going to be for the winter. Um, not not just all winter long. Bear with me here. But if you're going to get like a week of single digit weather and this was not buried below a frost line, just unscrew the cap and it'll save problems because this is always going to have some water setting in it and they are going to equalize wherever that outlet is, this water. So there is always going to be water sitting in here unless you pull that cap. That cap can do, that uh, that little T there can do two things for you. One, it'll catch large debris, like if you've got rocks or pine cones or something like that. Maybe not pine cones because they'll kind of float. I don't know why you'd have rocks on your roof. If you have kids, I guess that is why you would have rocks on your roof. Anyways, that'll catch that large debris. You can clean that out once a month. You can clean it out every six months. I unscrew mine about once a year, and I am typically impressed by how little debris comes out of it. On your tank here, we are going to just keep things simple and we are going to do our whole design system in that tank. But I think I am going to erase our house. All right. So you've got this figured out. All right. <clears throat> so now I'm going to show you how to set up your tank with a pump. So You've got your tank here, okay? This is your tank. This is your four inch inlet coming in, okay? And this is where your water fills up in your tank, okay? That's your water level. All right, in here, you can do a, uh, generally, what I do, is I do a submersible well pump. And especially on the off-grid cabins, I just do like a 120 volt. So you've got, you're going to set your well pump in here. Um, I can put a link down below on one. You can get them off of Amazon. You can actually get a 110 unit off of Amazon for like 150 bucks, which is not bad at all. You're going to come out of that. Uh, generally, there'll be an inch and a quarter. I just get an adapter and adapt down to a one inch because that is what most home lines are. And you're going to come out of your tank. So this will be one inch. Let's do that a little bit bigger. One inch. Schedule 40 water line. Um, it can be PEX if you want it to be. Generally, I will leave this being a rigid pipe, not PEX inside of the... Uh, 
<clears throat> inside of my water cistern or tank or however you want to call it. This is going to be four inch. It's what I use for my inlets. Okay, so when it comes out of here, out of the tank, you want it to exit higher than your water level. And the reason being is that way you're not losing water out of what is most typically not a watertight seal. Um, most people are not using banjo fittings to enter and exit the tank. And uh, banjo fittings are like $20 a piece. So generally, I just take a hole saw. I cut it as tight as I can for that one inch to exit and roll with it. And same with the four inch. You're going to come out of the tank. You're going to come over and you are going to go into a pressure tank. For those of you that have wells, you should be aware of what a pressure tank is. Okay, it'll have um, a bladder in it that you can fill to. You'll fill the bladder with air that will help maintain constant pressure going into your house or cabin or your homestead if you're using it on the entire place. So, one inch coming out of your well pump. Generally, those are going to be inch and a quarter, so you'll need an adapter to adapt down to the one inch. Comes out, goes into your pressure tank. This is where your pressure switch will be. Your pressure switch is going to operate the wire that is going to feed your well pump. Okay? So, that will tell your well pump when to kick on or off. We're calling it a well pump. It's the same as a submersible pump. Okay? That will tell your pump when to kick on or off to maintain water pressure, which is going to be generally something like, I don't know, 35 to 50 PSI on your pressure switch, okay? Then it will come out of that pressure tank and will go to, to your house or the water line that you trench for your homestead or what you could also do is you could, if you live off of rural water, you could tee that into your rural water line Okay, you could bring that line around and tee into your rural water line, but you have to install a shutoff valve on both sides. So, because you cannot backfeed this into the rural water system, that will it'll do two things. One, it's going to give your neighbor all your water, and two, there's a risk of putting bacteria into their system and screwing things up. So. Best bet would be actually for them to put in a check valve so that way they can't backfeed the system. A lot of rural water departments do that. Some don't. I don't know. You'll have to call yours and check. If they tell you you can't, they're wrong. Um, this could be your rural water line going to your house. You can tee into that. That way, if this is only a backup system for you, you can turn on and off this ball valve as you need. Just keep in mind, if the ball valve for your rainwater is open, then you need to close the ball valve for your rural water system and vice versa. If I were you, I would probably run off the rainwater all the time and keep the rural water system as a backup. But anyways, okay, that should answer that, right? Once it comes out of the pressure tank, okay, in my system, Comes out of our pressure tank. Let's see, get the right color here. Whatever. That's our pressure tank. Okay. We've got our one inch, one inch inlet. This is pressure tank 35 to 50 psi generally. Okay. It's going to pass through that pressure tank. You'll typically have a gauge over here that will tell you what your pressure is. That will be super helpful for troubleshooting. Then you will have your pressure switch. Um, that's going to control the wire going to your well pump. So however you want to draw that out. Anyways, gauge, pressure switch. And then what I did on mine is I came over up because I trenched that. And then I came over 
and then back into the ground again and went to my house. I put a shutoff valve here and I put a shutoff valve here. Here I put three canister filters. So one, two, three. This one will be, um, oh, like a 20 micron. Yeah, I think 20, 5, and then 5. And those will be the micron ratings. Here, I'll draw it bigger. Micron ratings on your filter. So start with a big one um, and then work your way down. Then you go up to the house, and on my house um, countertop, we have a Berkey filter, and that is um, that's what we use for our drinking water. We do have a fridge filter, and that will uh, that'll filter out for the uh, the ice and water if one of the kids decide to get water out of the fridge. Um, I don't know. I think that's pretty well it. I guess if you have a question, just go down below, go to the comment section, uh, leave a comment, put a timestamp where it's like, hey, this doesn't make sense. I'll come back. I'll make another video and I will respond and, uh, and share that video to you. It should give you a pretty decent overview on, the, on the, your rain collection system. I'm trying to do this in a classroom setting. I'm trying to keep the video as short as I can. I can get to rambling sometimes, and uh, and before you know it, we're 20 minutes in, and we haven't gotten past hooking up the gutter on the on the house, which is why this is like take 10 of the video. If you found this helpful, super. That's what it's here for. Um, if you didn't, let me know why, please, and I would like to do this again. I'll, I'll probably try to find a bigger um, whiteboard at some point. But uh, thank you very much for tuning in. If you would, please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video with some friends. <clears throat> I am trying to help people get out on their own and realize that this is not as difficult as people have made it sound. And I think a lot of it is just ignorance of just not knowing. I didn't know. When, I, when we moved out here, I'm like, heck yeah, we're going to live off a well. And if you've been around any time at all and talked to me, you have realized that that was not um, a reality, which is how the rainwater system came in. I've lived like this for s over six years, six and a half years now. Family of five, we homeschool. Everybody bathes daily, all five of us. Um, we've got livestock. We've got a greenhouse. <clears throat> we, we garden. We've got an orchard. Um, we still wash clothes, like we still have a dishwasher. This is totally normal. We started out with one 2,500 gallon tank. As money and resources allowed, we picked up more tanks over the years. Now we're sitting at just over 20,000 gallons of storable water, potable water on our place. Um, you know, you can go through the playlist that'll kind of answer some other questions. That way I don't have to ramble on some of this. You do have some maintenance to do with the system. It's really not that bad. What people are so afraid of is being involved and being responsible for themselves and their family. Afraid may not be the right answer, but boy, it sure does look like it. Um, I don't know. I don't understand why more people are not interested. Or maybe, maybe they are interested. Maybe they just don't know, and that's what this video will fix. But take responsibility and uh you know providing for your family is on your shoulders if something goes down in the world you're going to be mighty thankful that you had a rainwater system set up one inch of rain thousand square feet of roof you're going to net approximately or gross however you want to word that you're going to collect approximately 600 gallons of water you'd be surprised how long that'll last um, especially if you know that you don't have an option for any other water. So please like, share, subscribe, anything you can do to help grow this channel helps me a bunch and kind of gives me some encouragement on continuing to make these videos. I will, uh, I will try to get the rest of this rainwater series, uh, wrapped up and that way we can move on to some more stuff. But this is, uh, water is one of those things you can't live without. So 
I don't uh, don't see very many people doing much about it, and uh, that's what I'm here for. So, right on. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Mountain Wizard out.